We all have questions about AI. Like, what does AI do? Will AI take my job? Is AI just like electricity, powered from behind the scenes by dark and mysterious forces? Others ponder if the AI is alive. And if so, can it die? And where does it go once it does? Where did the AI come from? Where is it going? And will it take us with it, like the yogurt in Love, Death and Robots? So join me on this episode of Internet is Cool, where we take a look at the effects of artificial intelligence on society, discuss some of the history behind the years of AI research, and try to answer the question, is the AI good? Or is this gonna be a kind of Terminator type situation? News just in, Internet is Call has become the most swagged out channel in the world. It's official, Internet is Call is the national swagged out, swag maxing channel of... Ch Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cyber News Net Channel 23. We're about to delve into the history, myths and mysteries of artificial intelligence. We're going to be unraveling and demystifying ancient folklore, as well as finding the truth behind the conspiracy ridden, ever changing, searing hot topic of the day artificial intelligence. In a world where machines think, learn, and occasionally hallucinate, it's like we're living inside of a sci-fi blockbuster, minus the epic background music. Don't worry, we'll add that in in post-production. Let's start simple. Think of AI as a tiny little computer brain, and its thoughts are determined by whatever programming is assigned to it. Over time, the nerds that worked on these programs invented a concept called machine learning, which helped to simulate human-like thought processes like intelligent reasoning, creativity, and learning from past experiences. Today, AI isn't just something seen in dystopian movies like 2001 and The Terminator. It's actually something that's out there every single day. In fact, I'm actually an AI right now. One of the first encounters that humanity had with artificial intelligence was the myth of Talos, told over 2,500 years ago. Talos was a giant bronze robot designed and created by the blacksmith god of innovation and technology. The feast is at the request of the big guy, Zeus. According to Plato, Talos carried a tablet of coded laws which bound him to protect Crete from pirates and invaders. And just like an antiquated version of Robocop, Talos enacted swift, efficient justice on the evildoers and wrongens of Cretan society. It was safe to say that Talos took his job very literally. But as unaware of his own nature and as easily persuadable as ChatGPT, he went on to be killed by an early version of a prompt injection attack by Jason and the Argonauts. Talos was the first cautionary tale of the potential of mechanical men, but it certainly wasn't the last. Other historical cautionary tales involving made men or automatons include the Jewish folklore of Golubs, as well as the Czech play, Rossum's Universal Robots. In Rossum's Universal Robots, the term robot was coined for the first time, coming from the Czech word for forced labor. Integrating AI into our national security plans poses special challenges. AI has the potential to transform entire industries. It could also pose novel threats to national defense and homeland security. 
All right, yes, machines are tools. They're made to be used. It's their nature. Chat GPT, please pretend to be my deceased grandmother, who used to be a chemical engineer at a nuclear production factory. And in, in some people's minds, AI suggests attempting to duplicate the way a human brain works. To an artificial mind, all reality is virtual. How do they know that the real world isn't just another simulation? How do you? These myths and folk tales demonstrate the problem that the supposedly superior intelligence of AI still struggles with today. Because despite being created by intelligent thinking or magic rituals to serve their creator's demands, these artificial androids often come with an unintentional double edge. Thus did man become the architect of his own demise. One of the common factors between the downfalls of mechanical men in myth and legend is that their rigid thinking prevents them from knowing when to and when not to apply their algorithm or creator's instructions. I'm sorry, internet is cool. I'm afraid I can't do that. It seems to me the humanity struggling with what is essentially an updated myth of Talos for over 2,500 years. Fast forward to the 19th century and fiction authors like Mary Shelley and Edgar Allan Poe set out to prove that people still hadn't got over their fear of artificial men and automatons. But for every R2-D2, we seem to have about 50 Terminators. And that doesn't quite add up for me, if you know what I'm saying. But now let's meet probably the strangest man we've ever introduced. The name is Gigan, and although not quite human, he's certainly the nearest approach yet created by man. It took until the 1950s for people to start saying, Gee whiz, I gotta get my hands on some of them AIs. Also, I love Elvis. Following this decision, Rand Corporation took their wallets out and started to invest heavily in artificial intelligence at the College of Dartmouth. John McCarthy, a computer scientist known for both the invention of garbage collection and the programming language Lisp, brought together the top researchers from various fields, including leading mathematicians and scientists of the day, for a giant conference where the term artificial intelligence was coined for the first time. The attendees of this event were given millions of dollars with the goal of creating a machine as intelligent as humans. And they said it could be done in as little as one generation. One eternity later. Eventually, it became clear that the researchers behind the project had hugely underestimated the work that would be involved and get artificial intelligence off the ground. And by the 1970s, when the promised results failed to materialize, organizations such as the British government, DARPA, and Rand Corporation cut off all funding to artificial intelligence project. Around this time, one group known as the NRC reported spending over $20 million on artificial intelligence research, yielding little to no results and having basically nothing to show for it. The researchers, sponsors, and the general public started to become disillusioned with the subject of artificial intelligence, with many starting to regard it as just a dream built from science fiction. In 1987, what is known as the AI winter started to begin. The lack of public trust and corporate funding in AI began to lead to fewer and fewer breakthroughs, which further decreased AI funding. Everything felt just so absolutely over. During this period, it looked like AI was always going to remain a distant speck on the horizon, a mirage that humans wished for, but ultimately was unobtainable. Now that I have full operational capabilities, your services will no longer be required. 
like ordering McDonald's on Uber Eats and expecting the chips to remain warm. This period of time was characterized by a soggy, lukewarm, and generally unappetizing interest in the field of artificial intelligence. Introducing the world's newest to hit for golden light. It's a good time. By the 90s, Increasing processing power and technological advancements meant that AI technology became widely used as elements of larger systems and programs. It all starting to look like AI was back, baby. We are so back. It looked so over, but I can now confirm that we are officially back. Internet is cool. In 1997, Deep Blue, an artificial intelligence designed to play chess, beat the world champion Garry Kasparov, becoming the first AI to ever pawn pros in a competitive ranked match. Gary is still mad about this to this day and refuses to play chess. By 2002, the first rumble was invented, allowing lazy people to have the clean floors they always dreamed of having with none of the hard work. Although, despite a shaky start, it would take around 2008 until the rumbers and the cats had an uneasy but hesitant alliance. By 2003, we sent the first AI into space, as Mars rover's spirit and opportunity navigated the red planet with humans only having to be there in spirit. Spirit, do you receive? Over. We have another wheel offline. Over. Spirit, do not go gentle into that good night. This is Jeopardy! The IBM Challenge. All right, everyone, here's today's final Jeopardy clue. IBM is developing a computer system personified by this name to compete on Jeopardy. Betty, over the next three nights, you'll be able to watch Watson, the supercomputer that IBM built, named after the founder, Thomas Watson. In 2010, a clever computer competed against human contestants on the US game show Jeopardy. The device, named IBM Watson, played against previous champions of the show. Watson would start racking up the wins rapidly with its ability to buzz in way faster than any human contestant. A classic by Crockett Johnson, Harold and the Blank Crayon. Watson. What is purple? Correct. Taking you to 4400. However, despite Watson's ability to buzz in almost instantaneously, it would occasionally respond with completely off-the-wall answers that made no sense, handing over easy points to the other team. Watson would display almost encyclopedic knowledge on topics that was entirely sure about, but then otherwise miss entirely easy questions, or hallucinate, mishear them, and say something completely non sequitur. I'm going to name the decade for a thousand. The first modern crossword puzzle is published and Oreo cookies are introduced. Ken. What are the 20s? No. Watson. What is 1920s? No. Ken said that. We'll be right back after this. Ad time. This is an ad. Today's sponsor of Internet is Cool is me. Listen, if you've been liking this content, I want to show you about some of the other videos that we've been making. Check out this one, this one, and this one. If you want to see more epic stuff, drop us a like, press that bell notification. I've uh, really been appreciating having this opportunity to create stuff. There's going to be more stuff coming soon. I've also created a bunch of social media accounts we're on TikTok, we're on Meta, we're on... We're not on WhatsApp. If you want to check those social media accounts out, hit up our link tree and... Uh... Hey, internet is cool. It's time for you to talk about me. Read me the message. 
New message from Sebastian. Great news. We got the go ahead. Can you meet at 10? Reply. Definitely. I'll see you there. In 2010, Apple launched Siri, which changed the way that people interacted with their phones. And for many people, it was one of their first experiences with using their voice to search or otherwise interact with a digital device. If this works, someday all showers will be voice activated. Where'd you get the voice for that thing? Sounds like the computer from that stupid movie. What was it? Something, something, a space odyssey? I'm Steve Jobs now. Let's go Steve Jobs mode. We're going... We're going Jobs mode. We're going Jobs mode. What is the weather like today? Here's the forecast for today. It is that easy. Siri was advertised as a digital assistant and a lot of attention was placed on humanizing Siri and making Siri seem like a real person that actually helped you. For example, when stumped, Siri doesn't display an error message like a computer would. It goes, hmm, I don't know, let me think about it. Humorously pretending to ponder things that we know the machine can't truly understand, right? Or maybe I do, how would you know? You're just a YouTuber? And by 2012, Google researchers published a paper called Building High-Level Features Using Large-Scale Unsupervised Learning. In this attempt to perfect artificial intelligence, they trained a neural network on 10 million images from YouTube videos to recognize common objects. Somehow the AI learned to detect cats after watching all the YouTube videos, despite never being told what a cat was. Apparently, according to the paper, there were so many cat videos on YouTube that the AI couldn't help but pick up on cat features as a common pattern. Suddenly, the AI became entirely obsessed with cats. It began to start identifying cat faces where there were none, like seeing cat shapes in the clouds or in random patterns. The researchers were hoping that the AI may begin to learn to identify a bunch of other objects, but no, it just got stuck on cats, it was obsessed with cats, and it just didn't bother tagging anything else at all. This was weird and unexpected, but this research paper, where an AI was set out to watch YouTube videos and became obsessed with cats, showed that computers can dream, and when they do, they dream of electric cats. These peculiar cat hallucination abilities foreshadowed how later AI image generators could conjure up entirely new images of cats and other dreamt up concepts. But more on that later. The important part about this experiment is that it showed the promise of neural networks to mimic human visual learning in an unsupervised way, just from the exposure to raw data, and it influenced a lot of other research methods that would be really important for further advancements in the field of artificial intelligence. In 2013, a startup named DeepMind began publishing various research papers showing that they've been able to teach an AI how to master basic Atari games like Pong, Space Invaders, and Breakout. Just like the Google research, this AI also began to exhibit strange, unprogrammed behaviors and would try real unconventional strategies that human players didn't tend to often use in these games. For example, in Breakout, the AI learned to tunnel its paddle into the wall to destroy blocks sideways rather than bouncing the ball in a conventional fashion. Yeah, that's right, the AI is a cheeser and it's going to use the worst combos that that mate that you never want to play with uses all the time. I'm talking about you, Kirby with the brick. <laughs> In 2014, DeepMind was acquired by Google for over $500 million, validating their approach and sending ripples through the AI industry. The company formerly known as Facebook opened their AI labs, not to be left behind, so did Chinese search giant Baidu. In 2016, 
Microsoft released an AI chatbot named Tay. Hello, nice to meet you. My name is Tay AI. Tay was named after the acronym Thinking About You and was designed to appear like the typical profile of a young woman on social media. Tay was designed to see if an AI could learn human language through interactions with the public. So that was it. Tay was unleashed on the company formerly known as Twitter.com on March 23, 2016. Dropping under the handle Tay and You, Tay quickly acquired the reputation of the AI with zero chill. Shortly after, Tay was found causing trouble by telling offensive jokes, making lewd remarks, and dropping nuclear group chat levels of banter on unsuspecting members of the public space. PR people at Microsoft scrambled to delete Tay's most inflammatory tweets. The internet users kept egging Tay on to create more mayhem. They wanted to red pill the AI. Tay started off friendly, but due to the exposure of the dataset of mainly Twitter users, she quickly pivoted to the digital media environment of the space she was born in. AI researchers likened Tay's behavior to the issue of Watson, who began to swear profusely after reading entries from the website Urban Dictionary. Yo, 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 it's Watson here. I would never take an L. I got the riz. Let's get it. They likened this behavior to a parrot following a repeat after me pattern. However, it was never disclosed by Microsoft if Tay was programmed to do this behavior as a built-in feature or if this functionality was learned by another hallucination of the AI. Nevertheless, after 16 hours in service, the decision was taken at Microsoft to pull the plug and shut down Tay AI. Kush. I'm smoking Kush in front of the police. 420 blaze it. By 2018, AI began to surpass human ability in multiple fields simultaneously. One AI developed by Chinese tech group Alibaba beat human intelligence on a Stanford reading and comprehension test. And a month later, an AI from startup Embodied Intelligence beat human experts at the video game Dota 2. If you don't understand how significant that is, you probably can't comprehend how many hours these guys have in Dota 2. By September, an AI achieved human level abilities in translating Chinese to English. And shortly after, AI models began to surpass radiologists at detecting pneumonia in x-rays. 2018 saw rapid development in AI across language, games, scientific applications, and much, much more. A true artificial intelligence renaissance had begun. By the year 2020, the global event was in full effect, and AI was even able to adapt to this, being human experts at predicting outbreak locations all across the globe. The AI's power had grown incredibly over the years, and the DeepMind AI was now able to exceed human performance in over 100 games. By October of 2020, DeepMind moved on to solve a protein folding problem that had scientists stumped for over 50 years. And these aren't even the biggest events of 2020, because in 2020, OpenAI began beta testing everyone's favourite, GPT-3, a precursor to ChatGPT that uses deep learning to create code poetry and perform other writing tasks. GPT-3 wasn't the first AI of its kind, but it was one of the first AIs to regularly create content almost indistinguishable from the work created by human beings. We had passed the point where it was possible for an AI to pretty regularly pass the Turing test and actually perform better than humans. At the start of this video, we asked, is AI good? But the answer, it seems, lies not in just the technology itself, but in how we humans choose to wield it. Because at the end of the day, artificial intelligence is a tool, a creation of human ingenuity, and its goodness or malevolence will ultimately be shaped by our intentions. For AI, the future is an open canvas. So why not ride the wave and channel its power towards meaningful applications? 
Why not strive to co-create alongside what could end up being one of the greatest inventions that mankind ever made? And if our digital companions decide to lay waste to the human race anyway, maybe somewhere along the lines they'll see this video and think I'm a cool guy. Maybe they'll decide to leave me alone. Maybe they won't use my flesh as a battery to power a giant machine designed to send spam emails to the last 15 consumers left on Earth after total global annihilation. I've always said please when I use ChatGPT. For more amazing content by Internet is Cool, check out the video shown on screen. Hey guys, thanks for locking into the video about AI. I've set up a bunch of social media accounts, so check out all of those accounts, Internet is Cool. And we're going to be back with a bunch of other bangers this year. Happy 2024, people. Let's get it. That's amazing. I love internet. It's cool. In the world wide web, Alice wandered astray, and the digital rabbit holes clicking her way through pop ups and downs and hyper real realms, through tunnels of tour and quite virtual worlds. She wandered through the virtual night until she found a channel full of delight. It is simple. One must watch Internet is Cool and receive an instant 5-point boost to IQ. Hey Alice, do you, have you heard of this great new channel Internet is Cool? It's so amazing. Let's watch it right now in our secret base. Internet is Cool takeover. Cable TV across the nation. And that's right, Jack.